Right, so I'll spare you of any more corny theatrics. We all know how a respirator works. This, however, is a powered air purifying respirator. This is the MB90 developed by Myra Safety. It was originally created by the Israeli military for chemical attack. Myra Safety is a well-known brand for getting hold of military personal protection for domestic use. Or for those of us who like to still play soldiers. Now, some of you will remember that I created my own DIY respirator, but I've now created my newer up-to-date version. So I'll be talking about my funky mask idea. So we're gonna compare the two, but first, let's take a look at this. So as you can see, it's the same canister 42 millimeter military grade respirator filters. And because it's a 12 volt system, I decided to use the 12 volt batteries. So that was instead of using these 18 volt batteries and having this special adapter, which not everyone can get hold of for their brand of battery. So we have an on button here and a power display reading up here. But the main feature to this is the development of a new mask. So instead of using a full face visor, just like this uh, diving mask, I've gone instead with a buff type covering. This has been a game changer in the design. Now why have I taken so long, you might ask? The main reason is I'm still not happy with this new design. So I'm now gonna modify this to be the final version that I think will work really well. I've been using the original design for months. In fact, I used to take it on site with me to do contracting, which as you can imagine turned many heads. So I had to develop this a bit further. So let's make some adjustments to version two and let's see which one's better. So before we disassemble version two, first I wanna go over some of the features of version one, which in my opinion still works fantastic. So firstly, I've tried a selection of different hoses. I've mainly been using these vacuum cleaner hoses, but I've tried these canister gas mask hoses too. And you can see that this hose is from a CPAP machine. A CPAP machine, if you didn't know, is to help people breathe whilst they're asleep. So specifically for sleep apnea. But the reason why this is a good idea is that it's rated for safe use for breathing. Whilst other people's concern with using the vacuum cleaner hoses is that they have off gases of toxic chemicals. So we've still got the previous attachment, which is a fizzy pop bottle, which has been heat shrunk around the blower that's inside. And for the breathing piece, I've actually got a sink plug. This is from a caravan, otherwise known as a trailer home, and I'll show you how that that fits onto the mask later. But the reason is that these are so cheap and affordable to buy. So if you're worried just about your lungs and not what you look like, this is probably a good option. Now let me address some safety concerns of the blower that's inside. I'll just take the canister off. I'll take the screws out the back. We'll unattach the switch here. And now you can see how simple this is. We've got a 12 volt input from the battery, a voltage regulator, and an airbed blower. So a few people had safety concerns on this that we need to look at. And all I can say is it very much depends on the version that you buy. There are lots of different companies that make all very similar ones, so you need to check for these points. Now I can't open this up, so you're gonna to have to take my word for it, but just inside there is a 12 volt motor wired to a switch, and that is it. So the motor chamber is separate from the fan chamber. Some people were concerned that air is being drawn in through the motor side. So not only are you getting unfiltered air, but you're also getting nanoparticles from the motor itself. So what I'm gonna do now is do a smoke test to see. If it's pulling smoke into the motor side, then we know it's a bad idea. If it's blowing away, that's a brilliant thing. That means it's all under positive pressure. And in a similar way, people were concerned about these little holes here. So those holes are a safety feature for the motor so the motor isn't overstraining. And the key detail is that this is able to produce enough pressure to deflate something. That's why it has enough energy to be able to pull air through the filter. Let's do that quick test though. Okay, so we've got the filter back on and I'm gonna use a simple candle to test it with. So let's turn it on now. And as you can see, it's actually blowing out of the motor side. So nothing's getting in, it's coming out. And the same goes for those little holes. It's under positive pressure. So I would say we could block up these holes here, but I would say definitely leave this hole open because you're actually cooling down the motor. Now the other concern is, is that these are only meant to run for five minutes, but that is if you're on full power. We don't want to run it on full power. We want it on just a tiny amount. 
It's around about five to eight volts roughly, as opposed to the full on 12 volts. So obviously I can't guarantee that this is 100% safe. Is it better than using no respirator? I would definitely think so. And like I said before in the previous episode, it's the filter that is the most important part. If you're pulling air through a good filter and you're able to deliver that to your lungs, that can only be a good thing. There are obviously links to all the parts and the other episode on how to build this in the description of the video. Right, let's move on to this one. Now the adapter here was on the end of this hose. You'll notice that I've decided not to use the official canister hoses because these had a very strong smell to them and that worried me a little bit. And so all I did was I took the parts off the ends of this to use to build this. What you will be interested to know is that the Myra safety versions come with these packaging caps, which could also be used as adapters. I wish I'd known Myra safety before I built this one. So some of these parts I 3D printed using TPU and I haven't fixed them on properly yet. So I made a hose adapter, that's TPU. Made these edging parts. This stops it from getting bashed about, which is actually really, really good. I'm glad I made these. And the fittings for my mask were made from TPU also. But if you're not blessed with the luxury of the 3D printer, that's why I found out about these guys. I'll show you more on the different straps that we're using for these, because we've got a whole selection. This one is a body posture strap. So not only does it hold your air powered respirator, but you're getting a corrected posture at the same time, apparently. All right, so let me show you what's going on inside. So very simply, we've got the two wires from the battery pack coming out here. I bought this adapter off Amazon. All, all links to these things will be in the description. So the battery comes to this junction box here. The positive side comes down to a switch here and then goes straight to this large PCB fan. And from the battery side, we've also got it connected to this voltmeter. So I can actually see how much power is in my battery pack. So you may be able to see from there that it is slightly dusty on the inside. That's obviously a major problem because it's not fully sealed. So that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to fully seal this and then that won't ever be a problem ever again. But also these switches, these push button switches are absolutely useless. They break very easily. So instead I've got a lever switch that I'm going to put inside. Here we are, this is the new lever switch. And the main idea is that if I'm wearing gauntlets, I can flick this on and off no problem without fondling around too much. So you can see it's not very difficult to build this. It's simply aluminium extrusion. Again, there's a link to these in the description. Now the fan outlet is rectangular going to a round. So I've made this simple gasket. This is a piece of scrap leather and I'm just simply gonna glue that onto there like so. This is just super glue, which I think is the same as CA glue. What I've also decided to use is this tiny bit of cardboard here. As you can see, this fitting sticks out a little bit, so that should keep pressure upon that gasket nicely. Right, so now I believe we're ready to put the whole thing back together again. And for that, I've got some sanitary grade silicon. Yeah, we'll let that dry and then we'll give it a good test. So whilst we're waiting for that to dry, I want to create a new mask. So you can see how this one works. It's all attached using these hoses here. And on the inside, the air is transferred through these nozzles here to my face. And there's a bit of a plastic barrier, so it's not just seeping through the material. It's actually directed to my face and then seeping out the backsides. The problem with this one, though, is that it's made from polyester. And as you know, we do a lot of welding and forging. So if this starts to catch on fire, it's just going to melt to my face. And as awesome as these 3D printed parts are, I want to make it accessible for you, all you guys. So this is how you make one from scratch. So this time, I made making it from black cotton. This is lovely and lightweight, but more importantly, it doesn't melt to your face when being burned. To keep it attached to my face, we've got some elastic, and to create a sealed barrier, we've got transfer paper. This is for making your own t-shirts at home with custom logos, and all you do is you iron it on. We also need a pair of scissors to cut it to size, and I bought this hand-powered sewing machine, and it's actually incredible and very easy to use. And for 13 quid, this will go really handy for a lot of projects that I've got going on. Now you can obviously hand stitch, but for that price, this is going to save you hours of work. So we want to cut this now to the right size. So what I'm going to do is simply pinch the corner here, wrap it around my head, and I'm basically going to pinch the other side until I've got a fairly nice loose fit. As you can see, I've got to be able to slip this thing up and over my head as often as I need to. I reckon about there for me. 
So that for me was 710 millimeters, or it could be 28 inches. Now bear in mind that's also to account for somewhere to sew. So I've given myself about an inch of hem to actually sew along as well. Now you wanna make sure you've got plenty of height. So what we need to do is for the top part is have quite a large hem like that, which works out to be about 50 millimeters or two inches. But for the bottom, we can get away with just 12 millimeters or let's say half an inch. Just gonna square on there. Right, and now I can cut that out. So the next thing I wanna do is add this transfer paper over. These are A4 sheets. So I believe one sheet is plenty. I'm not talking about other brands here. All right, so what we wanna do now is just iron it flat. So we first have to peel off the backing paper. Don't make that mistake. And then face down on your fabric. So image side up basically. And with my pack, I've got a piece of this uh, parchment paper, which will go on top. And I've measured equal sides. So 200 mil, 200 mil. Now what we'll do is we'll put our iron in the middle and very slowly work our way to the edges. So when you're finished, it should look something like that. There we are, and that's machine washable apparently. So now what we wanna do is sew the hem, top and bottom. I'm gonna fold that over roughly half an inch or 12 millimeters. And then using little pins, we can just pin it together. These are bobby pins, by the way, and they're, they're pink because they're my daughters. Right, something like that is ideal. So with my uh, hand sewing machine, I'm just gonna rotate the uh, side here until the arm is in the up position. There we go, plenty of clearance. And just lifting up the little retainer plate here, I'm just gonna put it into the fabric there. Perfect so far. I am so happy with that. That was the best 13 quid I've ever spent. So now I'm gonna do this part. There we are, fold it over. And what I wanna do is have the stitch right close to the edge here. I want there to be a little flap. I think I'm running out of battery, hang on. So for batteries, I actually use these rechargeable ones from HiQuick. I've been using these for a long time now and they're actually really good. And I'll be using these for the Myra system, so I'll actually show you how long these last. And their chargers take AA and AAA. All right, there we go, back to work. I didn't quite get to the edge of this one, so what you have to do, see that tiny loop on the back, I've got to just unpick that and pull the thread through and then tug it and then that's a finished stitch. If I didn't do that, I'd be able to pull the whole length back out. Right, so the reason why we have this bit of flap there is so when we're breathing, we're not breathing warm, moist air under our glasses. So this should be a bit of a vapor barrier. Right, now finally, keeping the white patch on the outside, we're gonna put these two ends together. Now I've put it in this orientation because we're gonna sew from the bottom to the top, leaving the very top part last. And then when we're almost to the edge, but not quite, I've got a piece of stainless welding wire and you can see I've bent it into a hoop like this. And that top hem, we're gonna thread it all the way through. Now what you wanna do is take your elastic and just kinda create a small hoop on the very end of your wire. So there you are, something like that. Now you wanna pull that back through. So we're finally out the other side. Right, so now with your two elastic ends, you want to try and tie a little knot. So the last thing we want to do is just go over that last part with a few stitches, tidy it up a bit. Now we can put this inside out now. Right, let's put it on. Yeah, that's not too bad, I don't think. Obviously, I can't breathe right now, so I need to get the, uh, the air filter on. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. So initially, I was just going to attach the end of the hose to the mass, straight like that. And using this piece for an example, I was just going to lay it over the top attach the cap back on and then make some holes and that would be the inlet. But since playing around, I've got a much better idea. As you've noticed, I like to wear hoodies, but when I took the cord out of mine. I mean, they're a snag hazard anyway. They're not good to have around. I mean, who actually uses these, you know, pulling it tight? So what I did is I made a neck loop and I put this cord on. So I wrapped a bit of cord and did what's called a cobra knot. And essentially that acts like a locking toggle, but you, you could just buy a locking toggle otherwise. So I'm gonna wear this like a lanyard and pull my toggle up like that. There you go, proper boy scout now. Now I'm wearing the Myra safety one and all that does is hook there like that. I'm gonna adjust it till it's comfortable and that's brilliant. 
I put an extra plastic sheet inside my buff so it goes all the way to the bottom now. So essentially this is now universal. Slip that on. And then when I want to use it, just flick it up, switch it on. And you can tell it's working because it's actually inflating the mask. I can feel the air escaping around it, around here. And obviously I can wear my hoodie or anything over the top of this. Switch it off. This is so much more comfortable and easy to take off as well. That is super cost effective and super low key. Under my hoodie, you don't even, you can't even tell that I'm wearing a respirator. So I've splashed out a little bit and gone a little bit more fancy with the drain sink. You can see a stainless steel clip and a couple of washers. And that obviously just clips on like that. Pull it all the way up and you're getting the exact same effect. So the main question is, which one do we get? DIY or buy? Let's look closer at the Myra safety system. So the MB90 is obviously designed for military use, so it's really robust. It's delivering 90 liters per minute of purified air to you, and it's using standard AA batteries, which Myra believes this delivers up to 12 hours of use. I mean, even eight hours is handy enough. So there's a massive range of masks that you can wear with this, and even if you run out of power, you can still pull air through these filters and with the kit you get this belt attachment this just clips onto these hooks there and not only is a belt but you can wear it like a sash the other options is to wear it like a backpack and you also have a storage bag for it which also has clips for attaching onto the belt I like that it's got a toggle switch I wish there was a battery indicator, but never mind. So at this point of time, the sale price is $400, which makes it one of the most affordable PAPR systems on the market. And what you're paying for is the fact that it's been tried and tested professionally. If this is good enough to protect soldiers from chemical attack, it's good enough to protect you and your workshop. So going DIY is obviously going to save you some money. However, it does depend on the skill of the person who made them. And again, the main point is the quality of the filter that you use. A general P3 filter filter is what I would use for most applications. However, Myra has a range of filters ranging from biological to chemical attack. So I actually really like the original one that I built. However, these batteries do add considerable weight, weighing nearly 1.4 kilograms, that does. A new one is about 200 grams less, and the Myra Safety weighing just over a kilogram. What we can be scientific about is flow rate and noise level. So with a flow rate of 2.5 meters per second, we're getting 65 decibels. And the new one producing three meters per second at 60 decibels. And then Myra Safety at four and a half meters per second at roughly 65 decibels. Now going by battery life, we can all say that all of these batteries are rechargeable and I have spares at the side that are fully recharged. With my four amp hour battery, this lasts at least eight hours. That's the longest I've had for one four amp hour battery. These supposable three amp hour 12 volt batteries do not last anywhere near as long. I think three to four hours is maximum for one of these, but they do charge up very quickly. And Myra Safety claiming 12 hours is amazing. But if we test this high quick battery, we're getting 1.364 volt at roughly four amps that says. So these are NIMH 2800 milliamp hours. So the only sure way to know how long these batteries will last is to test them. So let me recharge all of these to full capacity and leave this on for the 12 hours that Myra says. Right so they're all fully charged so that'll go straight in there and what I'm going to do is set a timer for eight hours and we'll check it and then we'll reset the alarm for another four hours and see how we get on. Right. So it has been eight hours. It's also half two in the morning, which I haven't thought was through properly. And it sounds a little bit like me right now. It's lost its gusto, but it is still going. Still outputting 2.7 meters per second. I think what I'm gonna do is turn this off and then continue this experiment in the morning. So we've got two hours left on the timer. She's been going 10 hours altogether. She's still going, but there's nothing being read on the output. So I think that's the end of the test. So I'll take these out and load this back up. And now we're good to go again. So how do I feel about this battery system? Well, replacement batteries is certainly more affordable and you can get them anywhere. So for a survival situation or in the military, having access to readily available batteries is a good idea. For everyday workshop use, that's a little bit of a faff. So for the inconvenience, I'm probably willing to overlook just because these are far more affordable. And as we can see with eight hours of output, that is fine for a working day, I think. And to be honest, I'll be switching mine on and off all the time. So it's never really gonna do a full eight hours. Well, I think Myra Safety have done an excellent
excellent job to bring you good quality that is affordable. And you're obviously getting a guaranteed level of protection, especially if you're using their official masks. If you guys want, I can ask Myra if you want me to test out their full masks. But if I'm honest, I don't like having plastic against my face. That's why I developed the buff solution, so that it's as comfortable as possible. But if we look at the DIY selection that I've made for us, yeah, there's a lot here that we can adapt for whatever our personal needs are. You can still use these with a proper mask. We can change the battery system. We can have battery indicators. We can have it adjustable. And if you know what you're doing, it's relatively cheap to build, less your time. Personally, I would go down the DIY option because that's the kind of person that I am. I would very rarely spend the money unless I have to. But if you don't have the confidence in building your own and you want a professional solution, then absolutely, the paid version is what you want to get. But what's more important is what do you guys think? Have I missed something out here? What are you concerned about? I am concerned about the glues and the resins that I used in there. Probably someone will pick that up. So, you know, what do you think? Maybe we'll look at comparing this to other official systems. I don't know yet. But what I recommend for you guys to do now is to stop watching YouTube and to get out there into the real world and to forge for yourselves a life that is worth living. And if not, maybe I can recommend one of these videos. All right, I've got some lasers and 3D printers to look at, and then I want to build my steam engine. See you next time. Bye-bye.